Platano Games Network, NBA 2K19. This is the new patch, 1.03. Now, I'm a NBA Live player. I'm an NBA Live fan. The last 2K game I bought was 2K15 before this. And before that was 2K2. Over the years, I just downloaded the demos, the preludes, and in the PS3 era, I also downloaded the demos. I'm not a big fan of NBA 2K. And I'll tell you why. That's why I'm doing commentary right now, so I could explain. Uh, two Laker players. I don't have no fucking Laker... Um, excuse my language, man. I don't have no Lakers players, man. Do I? Nope. Let me try anyways. I don't think I have any. Nope. <laughs> All right, forget this. Let's try something else. How are these weekly challenges? See, these are on rookie. I don't want to play on rookie because that's going to be misleading. What's the point of me being all hype? Like, yeah, I'm beating them, blah, blah, and it's on rookie. All right. Let's try this one. It's on pro. So I really hope I can get into this game. Some of the things I don't like is just because maybe I'm used to NBA Live or maybe I need to get better at 2K19. But some of the things I don't like have to do with the gameplay. Gameplay. And we're going to talk about them right now. Maybe it's going to be easier. Since I'm playing on pro right now, this is my team. But, okay, we got a steal. Let's go. Kyrie wants the ball, but come on, Kyrie. Come on, Kyrie. Oh, come on. You see, I don't understand why there's a meter for the layup because I turned that off. But I guess they want me to change the setting over here, but I can't. I don't understand. All I know is that I turned it off in the main menu for exhibition. So let's see if it's here. Yeah, everything else is adjusted the way I have it in the settings except for the layup. But I guess I'm gonna do it. And you know something? I really do not like using the shot meters in my basketball game. Why? Because in real life, I don't need a shot meter. So I should be able to play without a shot meter. This is my first time playing on pro. Hopefully it results in um, better gameplay <laughs> or better um, play from me. Play another game with with the default settings on all-star and then i'm gonna have to tweak the the sliders like crazy because i think this game is severely broken forgive me if you don't feel that way i do and i'll tell you why there's a foul every other play literally there'll be a play with no foul and then the next play there's a foul then the next play there's a foul and real basketball is not like that at all like, I've never seen a game where every other play, there's a foul. I don't like that every time my dribbler collides with somebody else, he drops the ball. That doesn't happen in NBA. I don't like that the release is all over the place. The game wants you to depend on the shot meter. And it seems like sometimes I release it a certain way and I'll say it's early. I release it the same way it says it's late. I release it the same way it says something else. <laughs> It'll say excellent. So I understand speed plays a role, but it shouldn't be that crazy. I should be able to watch the way the player moves and be able to make the shot without the shot meter. It seems like it depends on the shot meter heavily. 
I don't like that 2K doesn't allow you to record any audio. It doesn't matter if I turn off the commentary, turn off the music, it still doesn't let 2K15, they allowed you to record the audio just fine. I'm not sure why. I don't know if they think it's gonna hurt their sales if people hear the audio, but that's not true. Because guess what? <laughs> people buy this game anyways. People are going to keep buying this game. It's like their drug. Okay, let's go. Fast break. Look how slow he's moving on the fast break. And don't tell me that it's because he's a slow player. Come on, don't tell me that. All the bigs in this game move extremely slow. I just checked out the sliders and there's settings for that, for how fast you want the slow players to move. And I'm definitely going to be adjusting that when I adjust the sliders. Because I've never seen a big move that slow unless it was Shaq in his last season. <laughs> Look up that, that practice, little um, pre-game practice that Shaq was having with Jordan. And you'll see how fast bigs are able to move. Now, it seems like playing right now on pro, the settings are more balanced and more realistic. I haven't dropped the ball once. I'm able to move the ball. I haven't seen any fouls. So I like that. When I checked out the sliders, they have um, the reaching fouls and the rest of the files and I don't like that when you change the difficulty the difficulty doesn't really change all it does is diminish your sliders so if you put superstar or whatever the top setting is for difficulty it'll adjust the computer to have way better sliders than you that's not a realistic way to um, increase the difficulty that's just making me play worse and I definitely don't like that in games like Madden, when you put the high difficulty, it keeps you at an equal level with the computer. In NBA Live, when you change the difficulties, it does not change the sliders at all. The sliders are gameplay focused, not difficulty focused. So I don't like that. I don't like that the ball hands that are always strafes, strifes, um, side to side look at this I can't just cut you see the way he's cutting now I want to be able to always do that but instead he's always mirroring the defender which is not very realistic not everybody moves that way and look at all these shots I'm making on this difficulty currently is on pro because that's the setting for the challenge but if I'm playing on all-star it depends on the shot meter it's not so easy to make a shot regardless of my um my slider you see how i'm cut that's on pro if you put all star every time you try to cut around a defender guess what happens he drops the ball or the ball is stolen which is not very realistic at all i don't like the speed of the game i tried putting the speed up and it still moves very slow. This is me holding turbo. How am I supposed to cut around defenders with Russell Westbrook if the players move at a very slow rate? In real NBA basketball, that does not happen. I'm able to, like with Kyrie, I'm able to cut inside really fast. I do like the way the collisions are on Pro so far. It's way better than on All-Star. So I'm gonna see what the sliders are like and adjust it from there. I'll give them that, that steal, that wasn't that bad. But again, oh, that was a good steal. Good putback. I'm going to compliment the game where I feel it's fit. But right now, see, Kyrie should be able to... You see how I just cut around the edge? Yes, that's what I should be able to do. It still looked way too slow while doing it. 
compared to how Kyrie would do it in real life. And that's what it comes to, down to. So I'm not going to lie. That's what it comes down to when you're playing these basketball games. Do you want realism? Or do you just want... What are they doing right now? <laughs> anyway, do you want realism? Like, do you want it to echo a real-life basketball game? Or do you want to have a fun basketball game? Me? I want realism. And there's a lot of things that are not realistic about 2K. And I hate that everybody says it's a simulation compared to NBA Live. Because I feel like it's the other way around. And to test that theory, I'm going to play uh, a 12-minute quarter game in NBA 2K. And I'm going to let the computers play against each other. 12 minutes. And then I'm going to do another one. Are you kidding me? And then I'm going to do another one with NBA Live, 12-minute 12, 12 quarters, default sliders, max difficulty. And we're going to compare the stats. We're going to compare the fouls. We're going to compare the points, the minutes. We're going to compare it all. And we're going to see which one is the, the real simulation. Kyrie will never drop that ball in real life. I'm sorry. Another thing that I can't stand about 2K is the commentary. A lot of people feel like the commentary is more realistic in 2K versus NBA Live. I disagree. Is it more interesting? Yes, because you get real life stories and the people like Kevin Garnett and other players about the league. Is it more interesting? Yes. Is it more realistic? No. I'm going to tell you why. But first, I'm going to talk about that shot clock meter. I want to know, and somebody please tell me in the comments, when it's shot clock, when there's five seconds left, when does it start beeping and warning you that you're about to get the shot clock? Is it at five seconds? Beep, 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 beep. Or is it at three seconds? Beep, beep, beep. Because in 2K, it seems to be at three seconds. And I could have sworn in real life it was at five, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to check after this video, but somebody please comment in the video in case I do. And in case I don't get the chance to check. All right, see, Kyrie should make that three. Every time almost. In all-star difficulty, it's almost impossible without the shot meter. That being said, back to what I was talking about, the commentary. The commentary in 2K is not realistic. At all. What I've been doing is restarting the game, and it kind of resets the commentary, and then it's more to my liking. Play by play, more accurate to what's going on on the court. If you let the game load up and they have a guest speaker like a Kevin Garnett, they barely do any play-by-play -play commentary. Instead, they just talk to each other for like 30 minutes straight. All through the first half, they talk to each other, and then in the second half, you finally hear them do some play-by-play. -play. I played a game the other day that was so crazy. LeBron had a crazy dunk. Kyrie had a crazy three. Then LeBron with the alley-oop. All this crazy stuff was going on back to back and not once did the commentators acknowledge it. They were too busy talking about candy or whatever they was talking about. And that's not realistic at all. In real life, it doesn't matter who, who's there as a guest, they're going to talk about the game and the action. So that's why I prefer NBA Live's commentary because it's play by play. And in case you thought it was horrible when you played the demo, it already got up, updated with over 1,700 new lines and phrases and team-specific stories. And it's going to continue to be updated throughout the season. So again, in NBA Live, the commentary is more accurate when it comes to play-by-play. -play. It feels like a real broadcast. Now, all these extra gimmicks that 2K throws into their presentation, like the pregame interviews half time interviews with the coach the um 
the player interviews. I like all that stuff. Sometimes it looks very unrealistic. That guy they have for the pre-game, David Aldridge, he talks like this. Hey, guys. So I interviewed the Lakers. Thank Back to you. It seems like 2K does not know how to put expression into their player models. I barely see the players ever smile towards each other. Maybe I'm just used to NBA Live where they actually smile and have a wide range of facial expressions during the game. Whereas in 2K, they just look angry all the time. I like um, the way things feel on defense right now. I don't know if that's a new patch. 2K has a serious sliding problem. And we're used to that when it comes to sports games, but come on. We're in the PS4, Xbox One era. Sliding. Oh, I got him. Sliding should not be an issue. At least not a serious issue, but there's some serious sliding in this game. And you really see it with the slow players more than the fast players. Because the slow players, for some reason, they move in slow-mo, the big players. And when they're moving in slow motion, you really see them sliding in place. Not realistic. I wish I could upload a video comparing NBA 2K19 with the default sliders, NBA Live 19 with the default sliders, and real NBA footage to the way the game looks on TV. It's way more faster. People feel that NBA Live is arcade. Have you watched real basketball? Real basketball, depending on the athlete and the team, looks pretty arcade. Have you seen Donovan Mitchell or Russell Westbrook cut between the defenders and just dunk like he don't give a mm. it looks a bit arcade doesn't it when I'm playing with Russell Westbrook in 2k I can't slash between the defenders like he does in real life why I'm gonna collide with the defender I'm gonna drop the ball <laughs> they gonna steal it I'm gonna miss a layup all these crazy simple things Right now, on this difficulty setting, I feel like the def defense is more realistic. I'm able to uh, slide around the fenders. In All-Star, the way they lock you up, you have no space to move at all. They literally stick to you like glue. And that's not realistic. Sometimes defenders play off the ball, and they give the, the ball handler some space. Everything right now just kind of looked realistic. The way he dropped it in a higher difficulty setting, it would be a steal. But still, that ball movement right there, yeah, I could take some blame, but I'm not going to take all the blame for that. That's Kyrie Irving, man. Look at this fast break. Kind of was moving in slow motion until... The other day I was playing the game and I collided with the defender and it loaded up uh, an animation that my player kind of dropped the ball and reached for it and then kept on dribbling. Guess what? Out of bounds, number 12. When I lost complete control of the player, you see the way I just slashed around the defender? That's real basketball. That is not represented in all-star difficulty. The character models have definitely improved from previous 2Ks. And I think that started with 2K18, I believe, or 2K17. But 2K16, 2K15, I wasn't a fan of the models. And for some reason, 2K14 looked incredible. While playing 2K14, it almost looked photorealistic. So it's kind of confusing. Oh, don't get me started on these free throws. <laughs> you have to hold the ball for like th three seconds, the shots. Look at this. And in live, I feel like it's too, it's too fast. You got to release it quick. And here it's too slow. And now that was late. Oh, wow. Even though that favors me, let's take a look at this. I'm not making some of this stuff up, man. I know a lot of people think I'm being harsh. But I'm just being realistic. Look at the way he slid. 
That looked like a, a travel. Look, guys, this is simulation basketball. And please, if you think I'm being too critical, express it in the comments. Because I don't think I'm being too critical. That was crazy. And it benefited me, but... Horrible. But I'm going to take advantage. Let's get some ball movement. I turned off the pro stick for shooting so that I could really dribble it out. Because I think the pro stick is too sensitive. Just one man's opinion. I don't mind missing shots. I think players miss shots all the time. But an all-star, I can't make a single shot on a higher difficulty. And that shouldn't really be affected. What should be affected when you change the difficulty is the game's AI and their aggressiveness. What shouldn't be affected is um, the way the, the, the game responds to your remote, to your actions. Come on, Kyrie. Good shot. I'm really liking the way the shooting feels on Pro. So I'm gonna check what, what those settings were for the sliders and try to find something in between what it is for All-Star and what it is for Pro because that's and I'm making shots. Come on, Kyrie, you're wide open. Oh, good miss. One more time, Kyrie. Can I get a screen? Can I get a screen? Oh, good steal, good steal. Nice. See, this is feeling more like real basketball. I don't like the way the crowd shakes with the free throws. Woo! Even when I'm the team that's home, it's just not realistic. I, I'm, I go off realism. Some of the presentation things, like I said earlier, are over the top. And it doesn't add to the experience. Right now in my team, it's pretty simple. Simple transitions, and I like that. I prefer that. I don't know what's up with those cheerleaders. It's clearly some kind of glitch. And the game looks beautiful in replays. Anytime you're watching a replay, with the exception of the way the camera moves, sometimes the way the camera moves, it, it just follows the ball and it's like moving all over the place. But sometimes it's perfect. I love how the game looks in replays. It doesn't always look like that while you're playing it. I like that because I wasn't playing good defense. But on the other side, this is Kyrie Irving we're talking about. And you're telling me he can't get around him that much? He's doing it now, but again, this is the pro difficulty. On All-Star, it's damn near impossible to cut inside the basket. So I'm curious, what difficulty do you guys play? What are your sliders like? What don't you like about the default sliders? What about the speed? What are your speed settings? I don't like that my team still uses the contracts system. Um, NBA Live used to use that. They don't use it anymore. I think NBA Live Ultimate Team right now is the best. It's been in years. It's incredible. It's easier to get throwback players. Um, you get a lot more coins for your games. Let's take a look at that lighting because I wanted to talk about that. 2K has incredible lighting in their WWE games. Why it hasn't translated to 2K, I'm not sure. But let's look at the lighting. Where that? That looks hilarious. That's like, if you think I'm being ultra critical, 
You need to see what the lighting looks like in NBA Live. As a matter of fact, you need to see what it looks like in most games. If you bought a shooting game and the lighting looks like this, when you look at the sun, you'll be very disappointed. And I don't understand because the technology they have for lighting in 2K, um, WWE 2K, it's incredible. One of the best in any game in the history of games. But look at this. That looks crazy. Player model looks good. Sweat looks good. Facial hair looks good on some players. Worse on others. On him it looks good. On Russell. Let's see some other player models. Oh. We all know he looks perfect. Giannis. And maybe that has to do with the fact that he's the cover star. But his model is damn near perfect. There's only some models that I prefer in 2K over live. And some of those include um, the Marcus Cousins. Giannis has a very good model. But for the most part, I prefer the models in live. I haven't seen Blake Griffin in live yet. I haven't played with the Pistons. He looks really good there. Let's see some. Where's Kyrie? My boy Kyrie Irving. We got here. <laughs> he looks sad. <laughs> they always look sad in 2K. Forget Kyrie Irving. Let's get back to gameplay. Talk about Brad Stevens. His model in 2K looks horrible. Horrendous. I don't know what's this glitch going on with the, um, the cheerleaders. This is the latest patch. They need to definitely fix that. And I got a question. And again, this might be me nitpicking. Like I said, I don't like all the um, presentation features that they have. Do cheerleaders always um, dance during timeouts? I'm just curious. Look how slow he moves. I don't even have to play on ball defense. Look how slow he moves. I should be able to run a real fast break. Right now, it doesn't feel that way. Everything feels like it's moving in slow motion. And if you put the speed too high, then it just doesn't look realistic. Okay. Let me see that replay real quick. And again, it's not that I'm nitpicking. I'm reviewing the game as I see it because some people feel like 2K is perfect. There's people that are starting to see 2K for what it is. Not perfect. Not saying it's bad. All right. No foul. No foul. Good call. Not saying that it's bad. It's a really good game. As Because of the gameplay and the animations, I think live and 2K are pretty equal this year. Because you have to put everything into account. Not just the features which 2K clearly has more features, but also how good those features are, what kind of replay value they have, and also the use of microtransactions, and also the audio. Oh, what a block. So that being said, if you take all those things into account, live beats 2K when it comes to microtransactions. 2K has way too many microtransactions, whereas live barely has any microtransactions. Only an ultimate team. And the way they set it up this year, you don't even need to use them, really. Unless you want more bang for your buck but for the most part you're able to get great cards oh good D see that happened exactly the way it should when it comes to the steal everything was responsive but in real life Kyrie Irving would have jetted jetted towards that basket and ha had a layup leave the default settings with the exception of turning off all the icons, shot meters. I could leave the default sliders 
and just up the difficulty and keep the same speed and everything goes good. But this game, it seems like you really have to tweak the experience. I don't know why 2K thinks more fouls, slower gameplay, results in simulation. That's not true. So I'm clearly gonna lose this game. I'm not sure how they set it up or how much points I was down by, but they want me to go like on a 20-0 run, which I'm sure is possible once I get more familiar with the game. Put that up. Good job, good job. Also in live, people have been complaining that Contested shots go in too often. One, well, 2K, I'm gonna complain that contested shots seem to always miss. Where in real life, there are some players that could make contested shots. It's all about having that kilo second of a jump ahead of your defender. Lost this game, it's cool, I'm not complaining some coins I really hope I can get into this mode why is it still doing that there you go <laughs> now my favorite thing about 2k is always going to be the classic teams and NBA live you're forced to play ultimate team if you want to enjoy the legends and now court battles with the squads and world tour excuse me Okay, yeah, it's a comeback challenge. I didn't realize that. Let's try one of these triple threat games. We already know who I'm picking. Kyrie. Giannis. And who we taking on? Is it random? All right, let's play against the Knicks. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, this is kind of cool. I like this. It's kind of fun seeing where you're going to land. So that mean I'm playing the 76s? Yep. All right, seems like a, a simple lineup. There's no reason why I shouldn't demolish them. Quit the squad that I have. We got a vet in JJ Redick. We got Dario, and we got a second-year pro who's basically a rookie because he ain't got too much experience last. Are we out? Oh, with the dribble moves. <laughs> See, people want to tell you that's realistic because the ball hit his foot. But Kyrie would never dribble into his foot. Good job. With his height, that's exactly how that should have played out. I really wish they applied some of the gameplay me mechanics that they have in All-Star. I mean, in, in Pro to All-Star, because All-Star is severely broken. And 2K is not going to change it. They don't care. <laughs> they really don't care. Look at that. When would you see that happen, man? I'm not making this up. You're going to try to blame me and say that I made the wrong dribble move. But nah, like, basketball is not like that. I prefer a realistic experience. Good ball movement. I'm trying to leave them on too right now. So hopefully I get better on the game. I really like the lighting in this court because the models look really good right now. Come on, let's move the ball. Oh! In a real five on five game, specifically All-Star. 
I'm guessing most of you guys have custom sliders. The reason I don't want to depend on the custom sliders too much is because I want to be able to play this game online. And I'm sure some of you guys never play against the computer and you just play online. And I'm sure user versus user, the game is more balanced. But playing against the computer is very crazy. You see the way I went around him? That's basketball. You don't get locked up every two seconds into a collision that re results in a drop or a loose ball. Good ball movement. Nice shot. I'm a fan of competitive basketball. I really am. Oh, Kyrie would do that in real life. That doesn't happen in all-star difficulty, which could get very frustrating for me. Nice shot. All right, let's get to Kyrie. Oh. Are there fouls in this mode? Because that should have been a foul. If not, it was a good contest. I should have missed that. I just saw the way they have the... Um, in some kind of column. That's kind of funny. I like that pass animation. I just really hope this game improves through patches because, to be honest, I was telling myself this is the last 2K game I ever buy. I rolled the dice by buying it. I enjoyed the prelude. I rolled the dice. And... All right, good call, out of bounds. I rolled the dice in buying this game because I only need NBA Live in my life. And there's things I like and there's a lot of things I don't like. So I just wanted to improve because I'm really anti 2K right now. And I do not want to buy 2K20 if I don't see certain things improve in this game. I don't want to adjust the sliders to death so that the game is finally balanced. It should be balanced off rip. A lot of you guys that love 2K and would defend it to the grave, it's because you've been playing 2K for years and you remember having so much fond memories of beating somebody online with a game winning shot and all that stuff. So I believe it's your memories of the game and your experiences with the game that boost your opinion of the game doesn't necessarily mean it's a good game or an amazing game or a perfect game. There's so many shitty games out there because people just enjoy them. Doesn't mean the game is that good, but they enjoyed them. So I believe you guys, your loyalty to 2K is because of two things. The experiences you had over the years playing 2K, you probably had a nice, game where you shut another team out and those memories and experiences add to the experience the overall experience reason number two all your friends are getting 2k if you get nba live you're not going to be able to play online with your friends because all of them got 2k i could see that being a possibility to why you don't want to get live and you stick to 2k it's kind of like why people get call of duty instead of um, Battlefield. And the third reason people get it, besides um, their fond memories over the years and their friends having the game, is their love for basketball. When NBA Live was out the market and 2K was the only game out, and basketball fans had to get 2K. They fell in love with 2K mainly because, guess what? You could play with the Miami Heat and LeBron James. You could play with Kevin Durant, Westbrook, and Harden. You could play with um, Steph Curry. And at the time, because live was out the market. So for the most part, the reason people stick to 2K it's not necessarily for love for the game itself. That was a nice game winner. 
and you see how Kyrie was out of out of the camera. I couldn't even see Kyrie in the camera because my camera settings right now. But I felt the shot. I felt the momentum, and I shot it, and it worked. That doesn't happen in All Star. I want to be able to play at the higher difficulties without the computer cheating and being overpowered or, or the mechanics being unbalanced. So again, your loyalty um, has to do with your love of basketball. And that's why us NBA Live fans, we could enjoy NBA Live to the fullest because we've played the game enough to develop some memories we don't really care if our friends have it because the game is just as fun with random people. And we love basketball and we see that it's really well represented in NBA Live. If you look up the review on GameSpot, not GameStop like the store, GameSpot, like spot, like a dog, <laughs> GameSpot, they gave the exact score for NBA Live and 2K19. They gave both of them an 8.5, and I think they're really being honest in what the game brings. IGN's review was fair. They have really tell you why. I'm not gonna play another one of those games. I'm actually gonna um, open these packs. What the heck? 20. 20th anniversary Ben Wallace. Oh, I got 11,000 coins already. Okay, I like that. It seems like the coin systems seem to be fair. Whoa. All right, so contains one play and four items. Ah, I like this one. All right, let's just go all out and buy this one. Seems like it's fair, the currency, the in-game currency. Hey, my boy Gordon Hayward. I get to add him to my Celtics. He's coming back this season, very excited. Ooh, I like this jersey. Nice, okay. 2K also, another thing they do better is that they have all the uniforms live tries to avoid adding um former uni um, uniforms at least in live 18 and 19 they used to have all the throwbacks but for some reason they're trying to avoid that now i think it has to do with the nike deal but i see that 2k is able to do it so that's a little confusing contract card a hey, celtic Cool, I like that. And these tokens, where do you use these tokens? No, that's real money, right? Yeah, that's real money. Which is not bad. It seems like you get more for your buck with 2K than you do with live. But I don't use that anyways. Excuse me. Um, Alright, let's update my lineup. Alright. And where's Gordon? Come on, Gordon. We're going to put you in there. We set. I like the starting lineup. I'm a big fan of Blake Griffin. I don't understand why he gets so much hate. I like that you can save different lineups. That's kind of cool. You just saw me play this game, right? Check out my NBA Live 19 video with Ray Allen. Just search NBA Live 19 Ray Allen Platano Games. So that you can see the speed and the differences. Adjust it. 
in rookie they lower the success for the computer and they have an increase to 55 for the user in pro they up the computer by three and they decrease yours by three and all stars is even which is why I tried playing all star first but if you go down to the the files you have blocking files reaching files and shooting files elevated to 60 I swear there's a file every other play in all star defensive awareness is at 40 why I don't understand it should just be at 50 and then look at this as far as slow players all the way down to 30 versus 70 it shouldn't be like that in NBA live every player has their own speed and it's a it reflects what their rating for speed is and if you want to increase the difference between fast and slow players it's one slider to increase that that threshold that that difference the gap whereas here they make the sl the big players slow on purpose and the fast players ain't even that fast either they kind of slide in place let's change it again to see how it changes when you go to the last wait all right we have we was at all star it's all even you go to superstar they have four points higher than you so you're telling me that a superstar difficulty setting means that they're overpowered versus me and me my players are worse why don't my players be at 50 just as good as theirs and it just makes them play more aggressive or something it's kind of lazy in their part making the difficulty reflect slider settings and then hall of fame forget about it look how much harder they are that's just not realistic that because i have it on the hall of fame difficulty they're automatically 10 points better than me so i'm gonna keep it at all star and i'm gonna do another video soon probably tomorrow um where i test out the all-star difficulty again without the shot meter and try to give it a fair review probably tomorrow thursday because i could only do it at my house where i have my mic set up i don't do it at my girlfriend's house because i don't got the mic set up there and the audio does not record for the game thanks for watching subscribe for more videos if you think i'm just complaining and comments but I'm not. And to prove that, real quick, I'm going to load up a game. Just so you can see what the all-star settings are like. I have commentary off right now. Be be a season opener for a couple of teams. So Boy, he has no respect. I just, I mean, I'm ecstatic. Tonight we'll see the Oklahoma City Thunder playing against the Golden State Warriors. Well, for the Warriors, they split the season series against these guys last season, two games apiece. Should be a good one tonight. Some teams fast out of the gate, others not so lucky. Kenny, for the teams that have started slowly, how do they turn the time? You know what? About a week ago, I was talking to a friend about that. And I was like, when that happens, you can't panic. The season's just begun. Identify the real problem before you start tinkering on things. Sometimes a line of change can help. Uh, things may just have to work themselves out. Time now for tip off. We get it to Kevin Harlan. He's got the problem. I'm not a big fan of all the pre games. Um, P green. Uh, pre-game sequences just because sometimes it's not realistic <clears throat> and I, I just go off realism it just doesn't come off as natural 
I really like this um, reward ceremony that they're giving them the rings, and you could actually see the rings in Adam Silver's hands. Um, sometimes it exploits the animations, depending on the player model. But I do like that. I do like this whole ceremony. I think it's pretty cool. Now. Oh, look, he's smiling. Still looks a little creepy. <laughs> but at least he's smiling. So, yeah, I think this angle and this cutscene kind of exploits some of the models. Because even though they look realistic in still shots. They don't always look realistic when you add expressions to it. Like Draymond, I don't like Draymond's model this year. I just don't. I don't get that gully Draymond feeling that I get. This boy looks too pasty. His hair is really light. His skin is too light. Just my opinion. Look how light his hair looks. Curry's model is really good. That's not the best angle. He got a big vein across his head. I like the model a lot. Durant <laughs> um, needs to trim his beard a little bit. Trim it just a little bit. He look like he homeless with that beard. Wow, they didn't even show the tall people on the camera. Kind of funny. I like this cut to the crowd. That was pretty cool. All right. Congratulations, Warriors. There goes Paul George. Something about the eyes don't look realistic this year. I guess for some player, players it does. For some players it don't. Like Curry's eyes look fine. Durant's eyes look fine. Paul George's eyes don't. Alright, let's see how this goes. Alright, we got the tip off. Let's try some good ball movement. You see how he's sticking to me like glue? Doesn't always happen. All right. Missed shot. Got no problem with that. Good rebound. All right, here comes George. I'm going to be very honest right now. All right, that was me. My butt. Yo, my, my fault. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see. What else? What else? All right. This goes back to what I said. There's a foul every other play. Watch. There was a foul right now, right? There's going to be another foul. And another foul. Let's get some screens. Adams. Let's put it up. Oh, too late. Come on, Westbrook. Put it up. Nice. <laughs> I really like um, Steven Adams' um, player model. It looks really good. Sometimes I don't switch to the the ball hand, the whoever's defending the ball handler, because I feel like the computer could play better defense than me. I don't, I still don't like how he's always facing the defender on Stephen Adams. I 
had to throw it up. Shot clock is coming. Oh, Adams. Pass it off. All right, right now the game is going pretty good on All-Star. I haven't felt like the computer has a severe um, advantage over me. Curry dropped the ball there. I didn't even steal it. He just dropped it, which, again, I'm not a fan of. Watch the rant. Seems like the computer is always making those contested layups. Oh, Westbrook almost got around. Another foul. If it was on pro, that would have been good. Of course, Curry shot's good, but that's Curry. I'll give him that. Look at this. I can't move, bro. I've never seen people, I've never seen anybody in the league play defense like that outside of the perimeter. That was my fault. Cool. Are right, we out? 